What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know it's real talk, boxing talk. Live from my man cave, it's your boy Johnny. And let's talk boxing because tonight I have a very special guest from the professional ranks. He is an undefeated super featherweight contender who is currently ranked number one in the WBO, a title that is currently held by Emmanuel Navarrete. He is 27 and 0, nine knockouts. And his next fight was just announced a couple of weeks ago. It's going to take place on October 5th in Dallas, Texas. But without further ado, I want to bring in my man, Toledo, Ohio's very own and future champion, Albert the Prince Bell. What's going on, my brother? Welcome to the Hangout Spot, man. Most definitely. Thanks for having me, man. Glad to be here. Uh, listen, man, it's an honor to have you on here, man. I've been following you for a minute. I am a huge, huge fan. You are a unique talent, you know, because not many people know, but in the super featherweight division, you're an anomaly. You know what I mean? You're tall. You have a long reach, which is probably why I'm sure a lot of people have been avoiding you in your career, which we'll get into in a second. But before we get into the next fight, I just wanted to tell you that when I started watching you a long time ago, champ, for some reason, there was one fighter that came to mind that you reminded me of, and that was Diego Corrales. <laughs> I, I figured you just about to say that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. It's the body type. You're tall like he like he was. In fact, you're a little bit taller than him. Your reach is a little bit uh, more than him. And of course, he fought his ass off, and so do you. But um, do people tell you that? Do you get that comparison often? Yeah, I think just based off the height, you know what I mean, for the weight class and body frame and stuff like that, I think we got two different fighting styles. But far as I do get the comparisons uh, just based off the height and um, reach and, you know what I mean, for the weight class for sure. Heard it a couple of times. I actually been hearing a lot lately than, than usually than I used to hear, you know what I mean? It's been like this last, like, couple, three, four interviews I did, they didn't brought him up to me. So who do you think that you resemble stylistically if you say your styles are different? Um, I'm more of a boxer type, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I got a, I got a lot of different styles that I go into, you know what I mean? So it's hard to really compare myself to someone, you know what I mean, um, in a ring. But, uh, yeah, I'm more of a hit and don't get hit type, uh, and a lot of footwork and stuff like that. But, uh, but lately in my career, I've been more walking guys down. So I don't know, it's just be, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's just different styles for different opponents, so. It's hard for me to really compare myself to somebody. So I'm glad you said that because we're actually going to get into that in a second because uh, your next fight, October 5th, Dallas, Texas. They actually, this one just, they actually just rescheduled it yesterday. I'm about to announce it right now. When I get off with you, they put, have to push it back to October 26th. Now, uh, same same, same arena, same place, but they had to push it back three weeks. There was a miscommunication between Ticketmaster and the venue. So they are trying to get that, to get that situated. So that's all situated now. So they pushed the card back three weeks, same same venue, October 26th to Saturday. Okay, so so this is actually, so you're announcing it for the first time at the yeah. Hangout? Yeah, at the Hangout spot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man. So there we go for my viewers. October 26th now, Dallas, Texas. But it's still for two straps, right? The WBA International and the WBO North American titles? Correct. And it's still against the tough Mexican, Jose Guardado Ortiz. Yes, sir. Mm, yes, sir. Okay. All right. So as you said, talking a little bit about styles, right? You're coming into this fight with some momentum. Because you're coming off three straight stoppages, including a first round knockout in your last fight. I believe that was in your hometown of uh, of Toledo. But uh, I know you're in the middle of training now. So I, again, I just want to thank you for coming on with me. But how's training been going so far? It's going good. Now you know what I mean. There's um, it's got to change it up a little bit now. Being I pushed the fight back three weeks. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to peak too early and overtrain. So I'm just trying to mellow out a little bit now. Be uh. Just, you know what I mean, finding uh, the comfort spot so everything can flow, you know what I mean, like a well-oiled machine. You don't want to peak too early in camp. So um, being this news, I'm just readjusting, you know what I mean, my preparation. But everything been going good. Like, um, I was already up to sparring 12 rounds um, this past week. I, I uh, One day I sparred like eight rounds. The next two times that week I sparred 12. So I was already up to doing 12 rounds and sparring and great shape and conditioning so everything good you know what i mean um everything going everything going good real smooth just uh got to readjust a little bit now 
Well, I mean, you know, you guys are used to that. You know what right, I mean? Right. Like you face a lot of different roadblocks and challenges. You know, people pull out of fights. Sometimes you got to prepare for, an, you know, for an opponent within two weeks because somebody had to pull out. So I give you guys a lot of props for that. But like we were talking about your last three fights, three stoppages. What do you attribute that to? I mean, are you uh, sitting down more on your punches now? It's just um, my hands are finally healthy. You know what I mean? Um, it's like probably uh, like I always will hurt guys or drop them or sting them. Then I have to just box them because I'd have messed my hand up in the fight. But it contributed back to uh, I went to a hand doctor down there in um, Atlanta, the guy that worked on Deontay Wilder hands, Tiafimo Lopez hand. Cut to, he's a good guy in the sport. So I finally went to a real hand doctor and he told me like, basically your hand been broke since she was like 17 years old. So I will always like hit my hands in the fight. Then I would go get an x-ray and they're like, oh, it's just bruised or whatever. Cause they'd be looking for a boxer fracture, which is right here. That happens like in street fights and stuff. That's why they call it that. But they act, they say when it's an actual boxer, the break be down this, in this area. So they was oh, always man. looking and checking the wrong spots. And um, basically every time I would hit somebody, uh, inflammation would get in there real bad, and I it, it basically be, I'd be one handed. So, um, got the hands situated, healthy, and now I can really punch with confidence. Like even like going into fights when they're not hurting, you still have that in the back of your mind to not really, you know what I mean, try to blast like that. But now um, I can just, you know what I mean, I could really be comfortable and just go in there and really throw how I want to throw and just be comfortable knowing I'm going to have my whole two hands for the duration of the fight. And I'm getting older, you know what I mean? So you're getting more into, more into your grown man strength and things like that. And just believe. And once you start turning guys over, you believe in yourself even more and more. So that's just all it is. I always knew I could uh, have the best boxing skills, footwork, ability, height, reach, and know how to use and stuff like that. But now um, I'm knowing – if I get those guys with the shot, I could, you know what I mean, get them out of there or put them down for sure. So it's just all of a, a mental aspect, but it was a physical aspect as well. So everything just coming together at the right time for me. That's awesome, man. No, for real, man, because you're blasting dudes out, you're walking them down, and you can see the confidence. You can definitely see the confidence. So, and right now you're the total package, man. And I, I listen, one of the things I did want to ask you, because when I saw it, man, I was – I was dying, man. Three fights ago when you knocked down, uh, what was it, Carcosia? Yeah. And you did that dance over him, man. Like, <laughs> that was insane, man. What made you do that, man? What made you, what made you show just, that emotion? Just playing around, man, having fun. You know what I mean? They're doing what they want to do. Like, because um, outside the ring, we dance a lot. Like, we always playing and dancing. And, the, you know what I mean? When we all hanging out, we dance and we just – just like having fun, you know what I mean? Just not taking stuff too. A lot of people thought it was disrespectful and bad taste, but I didn't take it like that. It was just fun. Cause like he did like a little, like a little, like when I the hate stanky him, leg, like, yeah. Hey, so it was like, so I just did it back to him, but I didn't know how close I was to him to like the uh to the video. And it was like I was over him, but I didn't I didn't think that in like live action. I was just in there having fun. I had knocked the guy out like that. Um with like the same left uppercut, probably like a few fights before that in Atlanta, and I did it, but I wasn't as close because he like when I hit him, yeah, I went down, I like followed him down with the little dance, but it wasn't uh, just in there having fun, man. Nah, I love it. Listen, I love it, but champ, you were right. You were literally like right over him. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I just, like, it was man. I don't know. It was just it was just something that spurred the moment. Just having some fun, man, and just being entertaining. Nah, I love it, man. Be yourself. And that's another thing about today's, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it all depends on the fan. But I like, any in any sport, I like for athletes to show their emotion. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Like, it's tough to go in there and knock a guy out like that. But if you just feel that emotion, man, let it out, man. I didn't have anything wrong with it. I just wanted to ask you. I was like, I can't wait till I get to the champ. Oh, yeah. Because right? it's something that he said. Because sometimes... Sometimes, you know, when you do stuff like that, it's maybe because the boxer was trash talking and you just wanted to like Because I, I don't really like getting to trash talking, so people don't really trash talk me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm very respectful. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, it's yeah, pretty easy going. You know what I mean? It really just business for me. I haven't really had a personal situation in the sports yet. But it's just, uh, like I said, I was just in there having fun, man. It just caught him in a good shot. He did the lay reaction. So I just made, like, my knees buckle, and for, like how his did. And it just, it just went to a little viral little moment. Uh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. 
So what can we expect in this fight, man? Another knockout? Yeah, man. I'm trying to get him out of there. I'm trying to keep it going. You know what I mean? Um, I should have been on a forward knockout spree. I let the guy, the the Olympian Dominican guy I fought, um, I had a lot of my mind. You know what I mean? It was like a day before Mother's Day. I, I, I put him down in the second round, but he kept headbutting me and stuff, and he just took me on my fight game. It took like two and a half, two, almost three points from dude. He almost got disqualified. I'm glad he didn't get disqualified, but I should be coming off four knockouts, you know what I mean? So I let him slip, but I'm just trying to keep these things going, man, and just um, – Cause they, that's all they could say about me at first. Uh, I couldn't punch or I wasn't exciting because I was knocking guys out. Oh, he's a complete boxer, but he just can't. Da, da, da. So now I'm proving them wrong. So basically it's like, what y'all going to say now type of thing. So I'm just on a mission to start just keeping these guys out of here and keeping improving my rank in other sanctioned bodies and keep keep myself at number one in the WBO. And I'm just ready for this title shot. So uh, this is my first 12-rounder, so I definitely don't see this guy going 12 with me. I'm not going to go in there just hunting and going crazy for knockout, but 12 rounds is a lot of time for me to work and operate. I mean, operate and dissect the person. I knew uh, later on in my career I was going to start getting more knockouts anyway because uh, the way I fight, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a thinker, you know what I mean? So I'm breaking guys down and breaking their will, and eventually, you know what I mean, they was going to start coming anyway, but – I don't see it going 12, but I'm not going there gunning for it. But I do believe I'm going to get a knockout this next couple coming fight for sure. I agree. I agree. And we talked about a title shot. So if you win this fight, will that put you in line for a title shot against Navarrete? I believe he's fighting Valdez in December, correct? Yeah, I've been, I've been in line. It's just, man, the politics of the sport is crazy. So I've been the number one contender for over a year now. Um, right when I became number one, that's when they, they made him super champion. That was like the first time that happened or whatever. And uh, the weight class, they had just started it all. A couple guys got granted, and he was one of the guys. So basically that excluded him to not fight a uh, mandatory or like a number one contender for over for a year. And he was able to go up to lightweight and, and fight for the title. So if you had won, they would have vacant, and me and Oscar probably would have fought for it because we was like one and two. Um, he went up there. He tried to. He lost to uh, the Ukrainian, so he's coming back down. And being that I got skipped over for the interim title because I tried to fight Archie Sharp, I was number one and he was number three, and we were both undefeated. They they denied us not not able to fight for. It. We had the TV back in. We had everything for it. You know, I mean, purses set. They denied us for it. I was 26 and 0. He's 25 and 0. Number one versus number three for it. They denied it. Then they granted Liam Wilson, who was number two, and Oscar Valdez, who was number four for it, for the intern. So that was crazy. So they fought for it. So now he, uh, Oscar won that fight, intern champ. So when he come back down, they got to fight again. So it's just, I just got skipped over, but I ain't tripping. You know I mean, so they, I fight in October. We're the end of October now. They fight in December if if uh, Valdez when he don't have the option to be a super champ, so he got to fight whoever's you know what I mean, who they order, which should be me, God willing, and um, and if Navarrete win, his super champion status of not fighting somebody for a year is up in February, so um, it's all on schedule okay. right now because I fight like I said basically November they fight December and then. I'm not going to fight her, and they're not going to fight until around February, March, April, sometime like that anyway. So it all lines up, and then we got some um, business good to go on with, you know, after this fight with top rank anyway. So it should all line up right there. And then guys in the um, rankings keep dropping. That would have been a potential uh, opponent for them. So um, hopefully these politics get out the way finally, and I get my shot, you know what I mean? Listen, I mean, it's criminal. It's criminal that you haven't gotten a shot yet. Right. Um. So that was going to be my next question. Like, why does this happen? Is it the politics? Is it guys just avoiding you? Um, Which is quite possible. Yeah, I believe Promotion it's, company? Yeah, I believe it's both. Uh, but I was more... Fighters will avoid you, but at the end of the day, when fights get made, fighters are fighters. You know what I mean? Guys can... Be a little iffy, but I don't really think a guys are just hundred percent scared of another fighter. But sometimes it can be, you know what I mean. I, I'm just speaking as in the whole of guys, but um, a lot of times it got to do with politics for sure. 
But, you know, I could say in my case, a lot of guys did turn me down, you know what I mean? Uh, whether it was them, their sales, their managers, their handlers, or their promoters, you know what I mean? I've been trying to get in big fights since 2019, and um, they just never materialized. Every time they ask me, I say yes. Every single opponent they ever brought to me, I say yes. Um, and it just don't get reciprocated with other guys, top guys in my in the division, you know, um, but we shall see, you know what I mean? But it's definitely the political part of it. But uh, hopefully it should be coming to an end real soon. Well, stay patient, champ, you know, because your time your time is coming, man. And um, I was going to ask you about promotion. Are you um, you used to fight with top rank? Are you still are you, you're not fighting with top rank anymore, right? I left top rank about five, about six, seven, about six fights, six, seven, six or seven fights ago. Uh, it just wasn't making sense for me at the time. It was an amicable split. Um, basically, uh, I got videos and stuff of basically why, you know what I mean? It came, went back to, I was just getting stay busy fights. Every time I try to fight a top contender or something, they would turn it down. You know, Brad Goodman, the matchmaker of top rank, Hall of Famer, you know what I mean? He, he went on record saying, like, um, it wasn't fair to me at the point. Like, Albert was just, he would fight anybody. he beat anybody and fight them, but they won't fight him. So it was just, I got tired of it. Like, I just wasn't progressing. I'm so I'm like, let me just step back. You know what I mean? And um, do my own thing for a little bit and run up these rankings. And then when it's time for it, you know what I mean? I left on a good note with them and with anybody I did business with. So, um, and that's what happens, you know what I mean? Like, um, I went back, had about five, six fights, then went to, they got number one in this division and got in all the section of bodies, you know what I mean? And um, now it's time to step back up to the plate with the, another top, I mean, the top promoter for to make sure I get these opportunities that keep passing me by. Because it's well, positive. Listen, and you got it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, you know, one of the things that fighters have to be in this day and age is that they have to be smart about the business itself, right? Like you said. Sure. And I've been following you for a minute. And one of the things that I noticed that you are you are smart with the way you move, the way you are moving with your career after top rank. So, you know, take care of business in October, champ. And trust me when I tell you, your time is going to come. And I am here with undefeated super featherweight contender Albert the Prince Bell. Let's pivot a little bit. Let's okay. talk about Alba Bell, the person, instead of Alba Bell, the fighter. Sure. What inspired you to start fighting? Um, my dad was a boxer, you know what I mean? So uh, my dad, my uncle, my older brother, you know what I mean? I'm the youngest of six. Um, I just grew up in the boxing gym, you know what I mean? Um, just getting babysitting in there when my dad and my brother go to the gym. I'd be the, just a little boy in there running around, being bad, you know what I mean? But just learning my basics and stuff like that. So when most kids learn how to walk and talk, I was learning how to jab and step and throw my punches correct and stuff like that. So um, I was just brought up in the gym, and but I didn't take it serious until I was around seven because I was still just being a kid. My dad wanted me to be a kid. So you can't fight amateur till you eight. So I came back when I was like seven and trained for a whole year. Uh, had my first fight officially when I was eight and won all the tournaments that first year and it repeated like the first four years back to back to back where I didn't didn't lose not one tournament or none like that. So um it was just for me, you know what I mean? I just loved it. So it just stuck with it all the way through. I had a long amateur career. Uh, and the rest is history. Basically in the family business. Yeah, type. Yep. And I, my dad that? still my dad's still my coach to this day. He's my head coach. So it's that's it's what's different. up. Yeah, that 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 I do know. And I, I love the father son training combination i mean it just captivates me it's real you know what i mean because nobody's gonna love their son more than the father no, you know what i mean you know it's, so like, it's, more, it's more common nowadays though you know what i mean i remember everybody used to hate on it and stuff like that you know what i mean was, back in the day it used to be rare but it's a lot of guys that's doing the father son thing now and that's on a high and successful level you know what i mean you gotta think about the benavides uh the haney's the um, tia Fimos, the um it's a lot of guys out there that's trained by their fathers these days that's having high success, you know what I mean? So, um, and then like you, your last guest, you got uh, the Normans and stuff like that. It's a lot of guys that's involved with their uh, father-son career that's doing their thing, man. Shout out. Yeah, man, shout out to the dads, man, that are training their sons. Wait, why'd you come up with the nickname The Prince? Um, 
it uh comes it comes back to my father name his name andy king bill you know what i mean he was like i said that was his ring name and stuff like that and i had an auntie that passed away uh she was always called me prince albert in the can when i was younger she used to always just call me that and it just always stuck with like all the older people uh people my age and stuff called me my name or a b or stuff like that but all the people that's older than me that was around my dad age and stuff like that all of them they just prince 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 so it just um it just in my first boxing trunks that I got custom, they just had prints on them, and it was just it was just from there, you know what I mean? But like we get when I get this world first world title, we gonna upgrade it, man. We going to the king, you know what I mean? So uh, um, I love I love it, I love yeah, it. I said I said whatever comes first, either my first child or uh, my first world championship. That's when I'm gonna change my name from uh, Prince to King. I love it, I love it, champ. <laughs> what does Albert Bell like to do other than boxing? What are your hobbies? Man, I like chilling, man. I just like chilling. I'll be into series, watching series and TV shows and on TikTok, man, just learning stuff. Um, I like playing basketball a lot, swimming, you know what I mean, hanging out with the, with the homies and just kicking it. But I'm very, very, very family-oriented. So I'm usually probably always with the fam more than likely, you know what I mean? Like, we're, oh my God, I got a real close-knit family, so... We always up, up up with each other, doing finding something to do with each other. You know what I mean? That's, that's, I'm just really easy going, just relaxing for real. Are you a big boxing fan when you're not boxing? And yeah, the reason why I ask that, the reason why I ask that is because I interviewed Sean Mason, Sean Untouchable Mason, a couple months ago. And he told me he basically don't like boxing. If he ain't fighting, he don't watch boxing, which I thought was weird. Yeah. It's a, it's a few it's a few people like that, you know what I mean? Like, when I was younger, I didn't like it because he used to come on so late and he used to be up all night watching them HBO joints, man. Um, I remember. Going over my family house and I used to go to sleep. I used to like watching it. But now I watch I watch all the fights, you know what I mean? I go to a lot of fights. Like, I'm, I go to mostly all the big fights if I can. Um, and I'm, I'm watching boxing probably all the time, like um, – I'll probably be juggling between three fights at once. You know what I mean? I might be on the ESPN Plus watching. When, um, got another app watching The Zone or something. So when it's fights on, I watch it. You know what I mean? So especially with some guys I know on the undercard that's come up and coming or some guys that's in the main event slots. But, uh, yeah, I love watching boxing. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the sport. That's what's up. I got the same thing. I got like two or three TVs in my man cave. In yeah. the other room, and I love it when there's two or three cards on because I got all three playing at the same time. So the more the merrier, man. The more boxing, the merrier for me. Yeah, it's um, just, I just like I like seeing the loop. I like know what's going on. You know what I mean? I like to know who's upcoming, who's who's past their prime now. Who? You know what I mean? I just I just like the I just like the the sport, man. I, love, I got the, the the sport done a lot for me. I gave lots of sports, so I like just paying attention to the sport and supporting it. That's what's up. Much, much respect. Much respect. Who are your who are some of your favorite fighters, both past and now present? Um, past, I got. I mean, I mean like, um, I'm an ESPN Classic baby. So a lot of people don't know about ESPN Classic when fights just be on all night, all the good documentaries. But like mm -hmm. I said, I grew up in a boxing family, so I'm I'm fans of all the old great ones. You know what I mean? Especially like my the Muhammad Ali's. I was Roy Jones crazy. Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, Floyd, Salvador Sanchez, Pernell Whitaker, um, you know what I mean? Just a lot of guys, man. Holy fit. I met anybody from the past that like if they was uh, had a great runs and stuff like that. I'm fans of them all. I done watched multiple, multiple fights of them all. So from generation to generation to generation. So I don't yeah. And then currently um Love, love what Terrence Crawford's doing. Special, special fighter, um, up and coming favorite. Uh, Abdullah Mason from uh, Cleveland, right down the street. Watched him since he was a young kid and amateurs coming up. Um, you know, what I mean, all the champions of love what Tank's doing. You know, what I mean, he's very exciting. I love Lomachenko skill set. Like, uh, I like man. I like uh, pretty much everybody. I'm paying attention on in a way doing his thing. Um, a lot of good fighters right now. I'm very big fan of Usyk. We have utmost respect for him for what he's been able to accomplish his career. Um, yeah, man. It's a, and I'm from a fight town, so Toledo is all we got here is boxing. So it's a lot. We we at shows or we got people on shows. And I'm just man. I'm I'm a fan of a lot of people. You know, what I mean, I, I'm just a fan of sports. So I'm watching everything. I'm watching everybody. So um, yeah.
I'm, I got a lot of guys, but right now, I, uh, Terrence Crawford really got my uh, really got it for me right now. I love what he's doing. That's what's up. They just announced today that um, the WBO is giving him and Sebastian Fundora 30 days. Yeah, for sure. That's going to be interesting, man. Yeah, man, definitely interesting fight. Just um, just because dude's a freak of nature at that weight class, 6'6", six, six, you know what I mean? Likes to fight in the inside, but Terrence has got that skill. I said that. I said it's the only person that probably could give Terrence a little trouble at 54 outside of the guy he just fought, to me, would be Fundora just based off of – his um his god gifted attributes of just being that tall at that weight class and long, but uh, I don't think his skill level keeps up with Terrence. But just that six six and that body frame and knowing how to use it in certain ways, that I think that'd be the uh, only thing that could cause a little stumble. Yeah, because with that type of reach and height, I mean, you don't really have to fight on the inside, but he likes to fight on the inside. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He likes to fight yeah. inside. He knows how to fight inside will. So uh, we'll see. That's why the, That's why they fight the fights, but we shall see. Absolutely. And you mentioned Abdullah Mason, man. He's he's going to be a problem, man. Yeah, I enjoy no, watching him fight. Yeah, he, he, he a young killer, man. He's so humble, you know what I mean? Um, so I love about him. They family-oriented. Um, him and all his brothers – like I said, we all grew up in the same state, so um, I've been on him and his family for years. You know what I mean? He's just doing his thing. He's putting on, and he keep performing every time he get out there. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. If you could play promoter, what would be your next three fights? For myself? For yourself. Oh, my next three. Um, I want to I want to be undisputed. You know what I mean? I, I think that's my ticket to Hall of Fame on the back end cut side. You know what I mean? No one's ever been a 130-pound undisputed champion. So, um, hopefully, okay, so next, not include my fight in October. So, But um, for myself, I would want Navarrete or the Oscar Valdez. Either one is a big name. Um, winner of Kasekau or uh, – Oshaki. Oshaki. Um, then hopefully, uh, if we're gonna do three, hopefully the uh, other two belts unified, then I could then we to unify versus unify for und undisputed. So Lamar right. Rose is the guy whoever gets the IBF, or oh, it really don't matter which order, but just the I would like to get the WBO first, then that either be me, then me versus Lamar Roach afterwards, or me versus the winner of Oshaki Kostakow, and then. Whoever left, you know, what I mean, let that be that. So, I I would want, I want to run undisputed and then sail off to the lightweight division undisputed. I love it. I love it. And speaking of selling off into the lightweight division, you're tall, so I know yeah. that you could probably carry to multiple weights before you know before you kind of call it a career. Where do you see yourself maxing out at? Probably forty. One forty. Yeah, more than likely. Um, yeah, more than likely. It all it all depends, though. You know what I mean? Once some championships get involved, lightweight, where the bag at, you know what I mean? And then sometimes them fights take a little time to materialize at that division. So, um, like I said, becoming champion or becoming unified in this put me right back – put me right up in the mix at lightweight to be in those big fights and deserve them. So, um, I got to take care of business here, and then we'll see what's on the table once we get up there and who's still in that division or whatever the case may be. And um, try to get to try to make the best fights and biggest fights happen for myself and my career, for my legacy, and for my financial well-being. That's what I love about you, champ. You're all about legacy, man. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're a student of the game. You know, there's never been an undisputed that fellow. I mean, don't, that, that that's you're such a smart guy. So to me, with you, it's more than what what you do in the ring. You know, I think oh, that you're going to be successful outside of boxing as well. One more question, I just had to ask you, and it's not boxing related. Who has the better beard, you or James Harden? Mine, man. His, his, his be too. His be too you know what I mean, you gotta. It's, it's too much, man. You gotta just keep it. You know what I mean, you gotta keep it right, tight, not too much, but you know, just you know, just enough right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love it. I love it, Chuck. This sure. was. Uh, I had to ask you that, man. I had to. No, that's cool. Oh man. man. <laughs> this is uh this was an absolute blast. So champ, 
for my followers, man, your fan, where's, where can they find you on social media, man? Uh, you can find me on Instagram um, and Facebook under Albert Prince Bell, um, Twitter, Albert Bell 419. And you know what I mean? Just hit me on there. I'm on there. I'm easy. I ain't stuck up. You know what I mean? Big on following people back that support me and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And showing love to people. Show love to me. Keep watching me. Keep supporting me. You know what I mean? The It's the quote I live by. What's delayed is not denied. You know what I mean? So just keep following the journey with me. And we're going to become world champion real soon. Hopefully in 2025. And I can bring you all these fights and performances that y'all want to see from me. God willing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for my viewers, if you are new to watching my videos, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. We got a lot of cool content coming along the way, so make sure you're along for the ride. Champ, this was an absolute honor, man. You know I'll be riding with you, man. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you what I told some of the other fighters that came on here. Once you come on to the hangout spot, you are family. Most definitely. You know what I mean? So you are welcome back anytime. Hopefully, you'll come back and chop it up with me after your next win, because I know you're going to win. Most definitely. And uh, and when you get that title, when you yes, get sir. that title, you coming back here. Yes, sir. We going, we, we hanging up the title in the hangout spot, man. We got to come through it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you already know. You already know, man. But like I said, man, thank you. I know you're in the middle of training, so thank you for taking the time to come out. Show me some love. Like I said, I'm always going to be rocking with you. So uh, good luck with the next fight. I'll be watching. And for my viewers, I appreciate the love. appreciate the support. This is your boy Johnny signing out from the Hangout Spot with Albert Super Prince Featherweight Bell. future, future champ, yes, Albert the Prince Bell. And I will talk to everybody soon. All right. Appreciate you for having me. Thank you.